northwestern Alaska. The brief summer has begun. The Mammut specialists inspect the route one last time. Now, is the helling here see, then I think that we are on the 5, 6% percent sitting. Now, the brug sits good out. No huh? enkel problem, eh? So. Okay. Yeah. Batangas in the Philippines. The finishing touches are being put to a complete zinc and lead ore processing plant. Of course, it's done in sections. Eleven modules almost ready to be transported to northwestern Alaska. That means 4,000 miles by sea and 87 kilometers over land and many obstacles to be overcome. 11 modules with a combined weight of some 12,000 tons. Factory to foundation. A mammoth job. Mammoth has the skill and experience to deal with this kind of total transportation job. The company's many years of experience with this sort of transport allows for tight but realistic planning. Perfect preparation is of course essential. That is why at Mammoth the job begins on the drawing board. It's there that the necessary provisions are built into the construction in order to guarantee safe transport later on. All that's needed now is a final check along with the constructor and the client and the go-ahead for the first transport can be given. First start with loading 2002 A and B, then we will move 2004, 2003 and 2001 on board. The overland transport specialists arrive at Manila Airport. At the port of Batangas, not far from the construction yard, the Magnus lies waiting. It's one of Mammut's purpose-built ships fitted with the latest equipment. A vessel built for efficiency and stability, and for that reason, the perfect means of transport for colossal and yet vulnerable loads. When the overland transport specialists meet their shipping colleagues, the vessel has already been correctly positioned. It's at just the right height for the roll-on operation. The Magnus's ingenious system of ballast tanks and pumps keeps the ship in exactly the right position while the load is rolled on board. To Mammut, this first part of the operation is merely routine. One by one, the modules are rolled carefully on board the Magnus. Conditions are favorable. It's only a small distance from the construction yard to the ship over easy terrain. Yeah, ja, verstanden. Schraube klar. Steuerbord 20. Steuerbord 20. The roll-on operation has now been completed. The Magnus is ready to head for Alaska. There, a completely different set of conditions awaits the transport. The unique ballasting system and the special shape of the ship's hull ensure maximum stability. As a result, the cargo is exposed to minimal stress during the journey. The first modules and the crew on their way to a new destination Red Dog in Alaska. This is it, a wild region with huge zinc and lead deposits. Bush pilot and prospector Bob Baker discovered it more or less by accident because his attention was drawn to the red glow of the soil, exactly the same color as his dog. His discovery would turn out to be the world's second largest zinc and lead mine. A wealth of ore to be exploited from 1990 and processed on site into raw material for the metal industry. The mining company is Cominco, the largest producer of zinc and lead in the Western world. The foundations are ready. 
All they're waiting for now are the 11 modules, which together make up the complete ore processing installation. Once Mammut has put them down here, they'll have covered quite a distance. In three shipments, from the Philippines to the coast of northwestern Alaska. To be transferred on two pontoons that can clear the shallow waters off the shore. And then another 87 kilometers overland. Along this road, the only one that links the coast and the mine site. It's been built especially for the Red Dog project. The jetty, which is now being used as a landing stage for the pontoons which carry the modules, will later be part of a port with storage facilities for the zinc and lead concentrates and for fuel. By now, the first nine modules have been brought in in two shipments. They're now being transported to the mine site one by one by the long road. On site, they're put in place using the self-propelled trailers. Not the most difficult job, this. These are not the biggest modules, and there is still enough room to maneuver. Well, sort of. After all, each of these giants must be placed on its foundation with pinpoint accuracy. They're making good time, as indeed they must, because the Alaska coast is only free of ice two or three months in the year. In that short time, the whole job must be completed or the planning of the project will be up in the air. The plant should be operational in three months' time. Overrunning the schedule might mean a long winter's wait. The constant bad weather only makes things worse. Man and machine are really being put to the test, but they're up to it, both of them. Much of the work has now been done. Most of the modules are in place. Everyone now prepares for the arrival of the last shipment, bringing the largest and heaviest modules. Apart from the huge size and colossal weight, the accurate placing of these modules on a site which has been largely built up requires extra attention. Okay, uh, we have the commander uh, and we have the suit magnet, so uh, we can get from both sides uh, weather information. It's a big advantage because we can get the trailers from underneath 2008 in between those two foundations very easily. Yes, but what is the impact to the overall schedule, Tom? The Magnus has appeared off the coast and is radioing in. She's right on schedule and that means that the land crew can fly over to the ship. Meanwhile, a pontoon has pulled up alongside the Magnus. The modules will now be transferred to the pontoon. This is necessary because seagoing vessels cannot negotiate the shallow waters to the shore. A precision job for which a nearby sheltered bay has been chosen. The enormous shift of weight must be counterbalanced. The right amount of water has to be pumped out of or into the ballast tanks of the pontoon and vessel at exactly the right moment. This operation is carefully coordinated on the basis of a computer-designed ballast plan. In this way, both the pontoon and the ship maintain perfect position during the transfer operation. Moreover, the sloping surface of the slipway is fully compensated for by the hydraulic wheel suspension system. This distributes the load evenly to the wheels at all times. 
It's here that the sophisticated platform trailers prove their worth. The operation unfolds smoothly, thanks to the cooperation between the Mammut land and sea crews. No wonder they know each other very well. This isn't the first all-in transport they're doing together. After all, all-in total transport is Mammut's principal strength, because there is an in-house solution to every kind of transport problem. From factory to foundation, Mammut can deliver the goods. Even for the short trip to the shore, the modules are securely lashed to the pontoons. The pontoon has been towed to the Kivalina coast, where the modules will be transferred to the specially prepared jetty. Here too, a ballast system is used during the roll-on, roll-off operation to compensate for the ever-shifting forces that act on the pontoon. The changing tide demands special attention here. In order to transport the modules by road, the self-propelled platform trailers are arranged in an adapted configuration. It's proof of the versatility of these trailers, which are truly modular. The wheel units, independent power sources and steering cabins make every conceivable configuration possible. This combination is very special. It's needed to transport the colossal modules along this relatively narrow road. The various sections are easily assembled, almost like a Meccano set. A network of pressure oil pipes transmits the 2,600 horsepower to the wheel units and provides the power for steering, lifting and propulsion. Like a long red caterpillar, the enormous vehicle slips underneath the module. Cabins and engine units remain underneath the loading surface of the platform trailers. No protruding parts get in the way. What's needed now is power. A hefty 1,800 tons is the weight of the Colossus, which is lifted off the ground by the hydraulic wheel suspension units. Okay, the module is ready to go. He will be on the road in five minutes. Okay, we are showing up access to all the roads. Have a nice trip. Okay, thank you. The road has been closed off. The transport gets underway. 87 kilometers lie ahead to be covered at an average speed of three kilometers an hour. The road is only nine meters wide, a narrow base indeed for a monster which measures 22 meters wide and 23 meters in height. But Mammut can handle it, for the computer-controlled hydraulics of platform trailer compensate for camber across the width of the road, allowing the upper point of gravity of the load to remain within safe limits. The road surface is covered not with tarmac, but with gravel. 
The recent heavy rainfall has made the road not exactly easy to negotiate. In such adverse conditions, a flat tire is almost inevitable. Sure, they have spares, but they don't carry a jack that can lift 1,800 tons. Still, maybe it's a better idea to lift just one leg. And on they go, 30 hours at a stretch. At the camp, there's plenty of camaraderie. The second shift relax and recharge their batteries for the upcoming change of personnel. It never really gets dark at this time of year. In northern Alaska, the sun doesn't properly set during the summer months. Still, the nights are long on the endless lonely road. When the fresh team arrives, the first group has completed its shift. They exchange places at the wheel and any important details are reported. Then they go and enjoy a well-earned night's rest. Well, night? The convoy moves on and is nearing the hills. 272 wheels drag the load up the slopes. Gradients of up to 6% have to be negotiated. Only a well-rested crew is sufficiently alert for this kind of terrain. Here, man and machine have to perform at their best. Here, everything depends on the right instructions and accurate steering in order to pilot the Colossus safely past the sheer drops. While the Mammut convoy is nearing the end of its journey, for the caribou, it's just the beginning. The approaching winter drives them southwards in search of warmer places. That means that time is running out for Mammut too. The final stage, the placing of the last modules. Now, there's hardly any room to maneuver. Just put it down there, will you?
It's here that the modular construction of the trailers comes in handy. By mounting the engine units on top of the trailers, the overall length can be reduced. By turning the wheels 90 degrees and moving sideways, the narrow passage becomes accessible. Without the mobility of the platform trailers, the remote control, and especially the operator's ability, this wouldn't be possible. Maneuvering this way and that, watching each corner sharply, disciplined communications. Here, Mammut shows what teamwork is all about. Here, it's skill and experience that count. The contract says that each module must be put in place to the millimeter. And that's the way it's going to be. Leo, yeah, that's good. Only with the trailers of the Mammut organization was it possible to place such huge objects in this confined area. All construction activities could be carried out simultaneously so that the plant could be quickly completed. Part of the crew is using the last remaining sunny days to get the equipment back to the ship while the sea is still navigable. The rest can go straight home. steel packages with a combined weight of 12,000 plus tons transported some 4,000 miles by sea and over land delivered safely and on time lowered onto their foundations with extreme accuracy today a complete zinc and lead ore processing plant Mammut's job is now over roll on the winter